With deals too big to fit into one day, our Black Friday sale is happening now at Sleep Outfitters. Find store-wide savings up to 75% off, plus free TVs up to 50 inches. Visa gift cards up to $400 and free delivery with select sets. With 0% financing for five years, free gifts, and our Black Friday deals, you can save now and sleep in on Black Friday. It's the Black Friday sale happening now at Sleep Outfitters. Oh, I am joined here today by Mr. David Clymer, Tennessean columnist, of course Bernard Pollard, our main mm -hmm. man, and John Glennon, Tennessee Titans beat reporter. Give him a good whoop, John. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's hear it. No I like way. that. No, way. no, no, <laughs> not good enough. Didn't huh? make, he didn't make the cut. All right, all right. <laughs> well, instead of doing whoops, let's talk a little bit about football, guys. What do you think? Why don't you take it away? Johnny? That sounds good. Well, well, maybe we'll just start off with uh, Bernard. Your your guest here this evening had a, uh, a couple, at least a couple of big plays in, right. the, in the game against Philadelphia last week. Had that his guest first, being the guest being Damian Stafford. There excuse you me. Uh, um, had uh, his first interception. Also a big breakup of a pass near the goal line. I wonder, as you watch Damian come along, what do you what do you think of his progress? Um, you know, it's it's, it's funny to see. Uh, and I say, I'm going to say Dame. It's funny to see Dame grow from, you know, kind of being on special teams and, 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 and being where he was supposed to be, you know, his, and when, it was, when his numbers was called, you know, obviously he stepped up for the challenge. And I, I can also welcome him to the interception club. <laughs> um, uh, it's always great to get your first, you know, your first interception. Um, you know, he, get, he got it against a really good quarterback, um, I think. And, um, you know, that's, that's many more. He's got many more to come. What kind of bonding goes into this with a veteran player and a younger player like that, Bernard? I know you're not around the team every day now like you once were, but, but when, when a guy comes in as a rookie, what do you do? And then what do you expect differently as he moves into that second year? Well, um, Dame actually, he, he soaked up as much as he could. Uh, you know, he, he, he played his role last year as a rookie. He stepped in when he, when he was called, you know, this year, obviously, you know, with the injuries and everything else. Um, he continues to step up. Uh, you, you can see, as, as for me, when I watch the games, I see the confidence level week in and week out. You know, as he as he get, gets in there, he's making plays. He's he's um, you know obviously um, breaking up passes and, and getting interceptions. And uh, I, I think it's going to be really good. Um, I think it's going to be really good for him in the future. It's, it's going to be really good finishing out this season uh, because, like I said, just the confidence levels continue to build uh, for him as he plays. Of course, the, uh, the big question on, on Titans fans, especially down the, the stretch here, everybody seems to be focusing on the quarterback, rookie, right. rookie Zach Mettenberger. Uh, got off to a little bit of a rough start against Philly, but, but really bounced back well, ended up with about 345 yards. Right. What, uh, you know, what, what are your continuing thoughts on, on, on his progression? Is, is he continuing to get better, in your opinion? Well, I think he is. I think this, uh, this past game was the first time he's thrown over 300. Uh, and to go for 345, um, and the, with the situations like they were, uh, he was on his back a lot. You know, it's hard for a quarterback to get, kind of get into a rhythm and, and to be um, consistent when he's, you know, constantly has, having pressure and, and uh, getting up, you know, getting help up or whatever. But, you know, Zach is, is he's going to be a really good quarterback. He is a really good quarterback. Um, you know, like I said before, the sky is the limit for this guy. I, I, I honestly believe he is the face of this franchise. He's going to be the face of this franchise. The guy can go out there. He can throw the ball around. It's, uh, he's another player where you continue to see him get better week in and week out, and I'm excited to see that. Let, let's look ahead now instead of behind Bernard. You, you guys go, the team goes to Houston to play, and you're playing a team, divisional team, right. for the second time. What happens between game one and game two? How much do they change philosophy, or right. do they change philosophy or game plan, and how quickly do you adjust to that? Well, I think you know, for uh, for our team, our team needs to be ready to play football. Our team needs to be need to understand that this is a football team that they're not going to change what they're doing. Um, you know, they're they're second in the division right now. They they know they have they have a uh, a really they have a good offense. They have a running game that you know they can run the ball. They got two receivers they can get the ball to. But I think on the defensive side of the ball, they're going to unleash 99. Uh, just let him go and wreak havoc uh, as much as he can to create you know crazy balls in the air for you know their guys to get. And so I think. For us, we need to establish, okay, either we're going to run the ball, we need to establish a dominance in the pass game. And on the decent side of the ball, you know, we need to go and we need to hit them in the mouth. You know, we cannot let Arian run crazy. Um, 
I thought J Mac did a really good job against uh, Andre last time, and and uh, we got to control. I, I think it's Hopkins or, or something like that. Um, yep. But I think we we have to control those receivers and make Fitz. Uh, we we have to make it complicated for him. Yeah, speaking of uh, Fitzpatrick, of course he's a guy you you guys are very familiar with on the Titans last yes, year and, and played him the first game. What you know, I guess the book on him is he's a streaky guy. He, he does things well for a while, but he also takes some chances. As a defensive back, do you, do you guys look forward to a guy like that, a guy who occasionally takes a chance with a, with a pass? Well, I think for me, um, you know, I, I respect everybody, whether it's a quarterback, lineman, skill position, I respect them uh, because this is a hard league to crack it to, um, you know. And so you guys call Fitz streaky. Uh, we as NFL players, we call him, he's, a, he's an NFL quarterback. You know, things are not going to go good week in and week out. They, it, this is not possible. Um, you know, Fitz is a guy who he understands the game. He understands he's very smart, we, you know, and, and um, you know, he's, he knows where to put the ball. You know, when you have a receiver like Andre, you have other receivers like Hopkins and the other guys, um, and then you have a running game that's established. That, that offensive line is going to move guys. They're going to, you know, move guys for an area to get through. Um, I think, you know, what's fun to me is it's going to be exciting to be able to see, you know, Dame and him and Fitz went back and forth last year in practice, you know, as far as interceptions, what he threw in practice or not. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be a fun game. Uh, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a test, you know, for our team because, you know, with the injuries, with guys in and out, you know, uh, different numbers being called, now we're going to see, who, you know, who's going to be ready to play because, you know, we're, we're playing for the future. We were talking before the cameras came on, Bernard, and I was interested in, where you watch a game and how yeah. you react. Tell the folks what you do <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. Get a, go to a little brunch, get something in you ready, and then you go in front of a TV, right? Yeah, man, I'm at, I'm at church, and then when, when church is out, you know, uh, you know I'm kind of sitting, sitting down with my leg elevated, and, and uh, it's just to the point, you know, where because I know the defense, I, I can understand where guys are. I, I, I see uh, what's being called, you know, and, and so now it's, you know, it, it's just to the point where I want our guys to go out there and play well. I want our guys to go out there and communicate and to win, you know, um, you know, as, as many fans, um, you know, I can't argue because I, I, I'm talking to people every day about football and, and different things and, and people have given up, you know, you cannot argue that because we have not played well. Uh, we have not been consistent in anything. Um, and, you know, for this city, um, I continue to say they deserve better. And, um, you know, I've said that from the get-go. It's, it's, this is something that needs to be changed. So do you yell at the TV screen? <laughs> yell not, at the refs? Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> is that hard for you to hold it all in? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's not hard. It's, it's hard, but it's not hard. Okay. And, and I know that's I'm, – I'm talking out of both ends of my mouth or whatever. But, you know, for just for me as a competitor, you know, I want to see our guys win. For right. me as a person who goes out there and I have passion for the game, I have a love for the game, and for me, when, when you see a city that's crying out for a football team to, to get a victory, for a football team to go to a playoff, for a football team to bring a Super Bowl championship here, you know, uh, I feel bad because, you know, that's what they're asking, but we as players, we're not delivering. Uh, you know, the only thing we're delivering is losses, but we're, we're, we're receiving a check at the same time. And, and, you know, I'm a true believer, man. If you're going to go out there, you put it all on the line and you play your butt off for your city, for your team, uh, for this organization, and for your family, and we're not doing that. Well, thank you very much for that insight, guys. And thank you to Ford of Murfreesboro for uh, sponsoring this segment. And we'll be back with Damian Stafford live here at Moe's. At Ford of Murfreesboro, we have an off-site quick lane service center, which offers the works package, which is an oil change and a tire rotation, any make or model, for $24.95. At Ford of Murfreesboro, we offer a lifetime warranty on all new Ford vehicles, including Roush vehicles. We also offer a lifetime warranty on brake pads through our quick lane and our service department. Ford of Murfreesboro is a 2013 recipient of Ford Motor Company's President's Award, which is only awarded to the top service and sales satisfaction dealers in the country. We are joined now here at the table with Damien Stafford. Hi, Damien, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Good, welcome, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna let John kind of grill you a little bit, get your insight a little bit, and you guys can banter a little bit back and forth, so go ahead. Yeah, Damien, uh, uh, Bernard welcomed you to the to the interception club uh, earlier tonight. Uh, tell us what it was like uh, in the Philly game to get your uh, get your first career interception there. Uh, it was a good thing to accomplish. You know, I've been waiting a long time to get one of those in the regular season. You know, I had a couple in the preseason. But, <laughs> they don't uh, count. They, yeah, they, they always <laughs> – <laughs> I kept the ball, and those older guys gave me a hard time about it, but <laughs> I didn't care about that. Sure. 
What, uh, what's it been like for you uh, this year in general? You know, like as Bernard said, you were mainly a special teams guy last year, but you've gotten much more playing time this season. What's, uh, what's that been like? What have been some of the challenges about getting more playing time this year? Uh, it really hasn't been a challenge. I wouldn't say that because I always prepared like I was going to play that week, even if it, if it was no chance, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, it hasn't been really much of a difference besides just taking a toll on my body, just playing more snaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can remember back when the Titans drafted you, I remember talking to you on the, on the conference call, and you said back then that one of the guys you kind of patterned yourself after was <laughs> Bernard Pollard. Uh, and, and maybe both you guys can talk a little bit about that. Uh, is that uh, uh, how much of, of your style is like Bernard's and, and maybe Bernard after that, if you could talk about it, whether you, whether you see that in, uh, in Damien a little bit. Don't say nothing smart. Uh, um, yeah, I used to think that I was kind of like him playing until I met him and I realized that I'm nothing like him. Uh, you know, no, nah, but uh, he's a physical guy. He tries to play smart, you know, because he's not really fast, so he has to beat you as he So, uh, so, you know, uh, just just um, looking up to him in the, in the film room and just, like I said, physical play. What do, you, what do you think, Bernard? Is there, is there a little bit of Pollard in, uh, in young Damien here? Not a chance. Oh, <laughs> man. Not a chance. Oh. You know, I'm an absolute beast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean, no, but all jokes aside, I, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to, to, to talk with guys who, who come in the league. I, I've seen guys come and go uh, for nine years. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's funny because he, he say I'm not fast. I told him I used to be fast at, at, at one point in my career, <laughs> but I told him he's going to go down that same road where, you know, his, his legs are going to get tired. I have, I have hundreds of thousands of miles on my legs. So, uh, but no, it, it, like I said, it, this is a lot of fun to be able to see guys come in this league, to see where they, they, they've started and to see where, you know, his goals and his dreams are for him, himself to better himself, to better his family. And, and I mean, for me, that's a lot of fun because, you know, when you have a mindset like that, nobody's going to be able to take that away from you. Yeah. Uh, Damien, I was going to get into your, your background a little bit. One, one question that I, that I always thought that I don't think I've ever asked is, you, know, you grew up in, in California, right? Yeah. So, so how does a guy who grows up in California end up playing college football in Nebraska? <laughs> how, does, uh, how does that work? Because uh, Purdue didn't want him. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> oh. uh, it, was, it was definitely a culture shock, but um, – you know, I I got recruited out of um, out of my junior college, and mm -hmm. Carl Pellini recruited me, which is the brother of Bo Pellini. And uh, when they recruited me, it just felt like it just felt like home, and especially when I went up there. The fans are great, the people are great, and you know, it, I just didn't want to go nowhere else besides Nebraska. Mm -hmm. How long did it take the, to, to get over that culture shock a little yes. bit? How, how much different was Oh, I, I never got used to it. <laughs> I never got used to it. That first week, the first week it snowed in Nebraska, Bo Pelini ripped me because I, never, I didn't go to class. And I, I, didn't, I was like, are you supposed to walk in this snow? I wear, I wear vans. I don't have boots. I don't have stuff like that. You know, so it was, it was different. Uh, yeah, and, and also speaking of the, the Pelinis, uh, I've never spoken to either of them personally, but every time I see them on TV, Especially Bo Pelini, he, he looks like a, a mean guy. He, he looks like a, a, a tough guy. What what does he like to uh, to play for? Uh, he, he's great to play for. Honestly, he's one of my favorite coaches that I've had. Um, in between those lines, he's gonna get after you if you don't do the right things, you know. And uh, but outside of outside of football, he's a great guy. He's always gonna look out for you. He's gonna make sure that you got the best. And he's pretty much a stand up guy. Him and his brother. Gotcha. Um, question I had for, for both you guys. Last game, uh, Michael Griffin, one of your fellow safeties there, uh, in the, at the end of the, near the end of the first half, dislocates his, his shoulder uh, on a play. And I believe he said when he, he rolled over, it, it popped back in. Now, he still had to go and get x-rays and so forth. But he came back, played the entire second half almost after that. Have either of you guys experienced anything like that, dislocating a shoulder in a game and and coming back to play? Uh, luckily, no, I haven't experienced po anything popping out or nothing. I've never been really banged up, knock on wood. So. What's the worst injury you've had? A uh, pulled hamstring. Pulled hamstring? Yeah. It's because you don't have as much tread on your tires as, <laughs> as, uh, as Bernard yeah, but, does. But, right? but he's not fast either. He's not fast <laughs> enough to pull a hamstring. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, I got a chance to talk with Mike, um, and that was, that was tough. But I think, you know, injuries – 
injury going to come with this game? You know, uh, I, I was blessed with an opportunity to be able to play in the Super Bowl and win one. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I played with six broken ribs. Yeah. And, and, and that's the name of the game. You're going to get banged up. You're going to get hurt. You know, it's about, you know, your passion and your love for the game. Or are you going to go out there and put it online for your teammates, for your city, for your organization, and for your family? And, and you know, players continue to do that year in, year out, week in and week out. And uh, that tells you a lot about football players. But, you know, you got some guys that are just, you know, they'll call the quits on you and sit it down. Uh, but, you know, uh, when you have a guy like that that'll go out there and play, that's good. Yeah, I was going to say pretty impressive. I mean, the, the game was, you know, not out of hand, but it wasn't close to that point. Season, there's not a whole lot of chance for a playoffs. That's got to say something about, about Michael Griffin at that point that he still comes back and, and, and plays for a whole half after that, huh? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, that when a guy can go out there and put it online, knowing good and well, something just popped out of place. You know, obviously they went in and evaluated him in the locker room, but for the most part, you know, he, he stepped back in. He hurt now. Uh, you know, uh, fans, they don't understand everything, mm -hmm. you know, that we do. You know, you see the finished product on, on Sunday, but, you know, from Monday to Saturday, you're trying to get your body ready. You're trying to mentally and physically, you're trying to be there so you can go out there and perform. And, uh, you know, he did a great job of that. Uh, Damien, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the, the Titans in the last few weeks, especially a lot of younger guys seeing seeing a lot more playing time. And I'm wondering if 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 you kind of like that being one of those younger guys yourself. And you know, when you look at a Zach Mettenberger or Taylor Lewan or uh, you know some some of the other guys on defense as well, are, are you encouraged? Uh, you know, for the future, do, do you like what you see out of this? young crop of, of players oh yeah i think it's good for all of us young guys um getting out there and being able to get some experience you know and uh just going out there and having fun that's 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 all it is you know it's a kid's game and we're just playing it for a lot more money you know mm -hmm. so I a, think a lot more money i ain't get paid as a kid <laughs> you got paid <laughs> <laughs> um what, Bernard, what about for veterans? I wonder what it's like. Also, you know, when when a whole lot of when when the team says kind of we're going in a youth movement, we're we're putting a lot of young guys in the lineup. I wonder what that's like for for a veteran. Also, is that a little bit more of a challenge knowing that the team is you know is looking ahead a little bit? Yes, yeah, well, well, yeah, my back's packed, ready to roll. So <laughs> no, I'm just, well, already, I'm joking. But no, it's 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 all good. You know, that's what that's the direction. If that if that's the direction they want to go. Uh, that's fine with me. Um, you know, like I said, I've had the, I have the experience. I have the years in this league. I, I have the, the accolades and everything else. And, um, you know, if, like I said, if that's the direction that they want to go, we as veterans, we have to be ready for that and, and move forward. Um, Damian, maybe as, as you look ahead uh, this week to, to Houston, uh, we talked about uh, Arian Foster and the, uh, and the running game. It's been, been kind of a challenge for you guys to stop the run in recent weeks. How can you – how can you make that change this week against uh, Arian Foster in Houston? What do you guys need to do to, to stop the run? Uh, we just got to get in there tomorrow, get that plan, and then go out there and execute pretty much. I'm not a big one about talking and we'll do this, do that. It's just execute. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's football. If we, do our, if we do our job, it, sh it shouldn't be a problem for us. Mm -hmm. does, it, does it drive you a little nuts, a little frustrating that that problem keeps popping up week after week like that? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, you, you never want to have to deal with stuff like that. And But like I said, you got to execute. If you don't, you're going to have those problems. All right, very good. Well, I know the fans would look forward to seeing uh, you guys execute this coming weekend. But before we get that far, we are going to take a little break, and we'll be back with some trivia. With these Sleep Outfitters brand promises, you can rest assured you made the right purchase. Find the mattress set you purchased from us at an advertised lower price, and I'll refund you 120% of the difference. That's our price promise. Not comfortable on your new mattress set within 120 nights? We'll exchange it for one that's just right for you. See our website for complete details. Plus, ask about low-rate financing options and free delivery at Sleep Outfitters. The best price on the best brands, guaranteed. We are brought to you this week and every week by Sleep Outfitters, and we have entered the part of the show here at Moe's where we do audience trivia. So we've paired two of our audience members, one with Bernard and one with Damien, and this week, appropriately so, all of our questions are about Thanksgiving, so football Thanksgiving history. So we'll see how you guys are doing. Bernard already called you out, Damien, when we were off camera. He says you don't know anything, so you've got to prove him wrong, right? Oh, yeah. All right, so right now, uh, uh, Damien, you are joined up there by Grayson Gunn. Hi, Grayson. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All right. And 
Uh, we see another uh, show regular up there, Mr. Bill Pollard, who's Bernard's brother from another, another mother. Hey, right? I just stayed in the sun. I, I, was, yep. I was in the sun too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, should, this is a power team, the Pollard power team here. I like this. I really like this. He keeps okay. moving, I keep finding him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Damien, since it's Bernard's show, we typically let him go first. So um, uh, The away team goes first. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not, you, not you in talking this, too not much. In this, let her go. Not in this house. Not in this venue. <laughs> but to give you a little bit of rundown about how this works, so there's four quarters. There, each team gets a question. There's a three-point question and a seven-point question. So you guys can choose which one you want. Three points are typically easier than seven-point questions, but you know you can get off to a big lead if you go big. So okay. keep that in mind. All right, Team Pollards over there. <laughs> you want seven points or three points? Go, go ahead, cousin. <laughs> we'll go with seven. Seven points. Okay. First quarter, seven-point question. Since moving to Nashville, have the Titans ever played on Thanksgiving Day? No. <laughs> no. No. Huh? We'll Answers, say no. You're saying no. The answer is yes. Oh. Who, who knows? Wrong. Anybody know in here? I told what you year? yes. Yeah, tell me. What year? <laughs> what year? No, who against? It was against, yes. Yes, against the Lions oh, in 2008. 2008. No, and the score was 47 to 10. Yeah. There you go. All right, guys. What are you laughing about up there? What's going on? Oh, don't worry about it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I'm going to call them out in a minute. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Do you want the three point? <laughs> focus. Focus. You want the three point or the seven point question? Seven. Seven. Okay. You're not even going to talk to your partner? No, he's just okay. making executive decisions up there. <laughs> All right. Here you go, guys. Name one of the two teams that have never played on Thanksgiving Day. Ooh. That's tough. You said name one, or one two? Yeah, one of the two. One of the two. There's only two, so There's name one 30, of the two. There's only 32. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you Go think, ahead. guys? Take a swing. Talk Take it a swing out. Away. Talk it out. Yeah. Mm, warm weather, cold weather teams. What do you think? Uh, uh, throw something out there. Throw something out there. Uh, the Rams. The Rams. No. Ooh. Yes. The answer, oh. Jacksonville or yep. Carolina. Oh, yeah. oh. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get yours either, I know, my man. But they, so. but, but they got a wrong second, so we good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Second quarter. Score is 0-0. Zero, zero. What do you want? Seven or three? Seven. We'll get to go bigger go home. All right. Seven. Here we go. All right. This quarterback passed for a Thanksgiving high 455 yards against Minnesota on Thanksgiving in 1998. So we're taking you way back here. Against the Minnesota Vikings? Uh, yes, against Minnesota on Thanksgiving, 1998. That's the year you got drafted, ain't it? That's a high, 455 yards. We're going to go with Brent Farr. No, but that's a good guess. Troy Aikman. Oh. Yeah. They, they don't ever play the, the Vikings. Uh, I, told, I try to tell you, Troy. I'm sorry. He's not listening. We gotta find somebody else. You done? You just don't, no longer, he's no longer family. He's out, huh? That's what we got at Thanksgiving, right? You guys, family my bad, bickering, my bad. right? I, I, it's all it's all the same thing. Seven. Seven points? Okay. Jeez. In 1976. Were either of you even born in 1976? No, nope, they wouldn't even thought about either. <laughs> That's year you got drafted? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, guys, think back. Against 76. Detroit, 1976, who was a big running back in 1976? I mean, Ooh. Jesus was playing back then. We, <laughs> we got a lot of audience members weighing in out here today. What do you think, guys? Give us a guess. Give us a guess. Uh, yeah, that's cheating. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear anything. What did you say? What did you say? Nothing? You not, you don't even get a Go guess? Ahead. No, no. Walter Payton. Walter Payton. The answer is O.J. Simpson. O.J. Oh. Simpson. Nah, I know you're loud and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> loud and wrong. <laughs> okay, so wait, we don't have a score yet, do we? No, this is this, this a typical Titan game. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Oh, 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 nice. Woo. All right. Zero, zero. Going into the third quarter. What do you think, Team Pollards? We've got to go seven. Go seven. Going seven. Okay. On a snowy thanks. This is a long question. Please bear with me. All right. On a snowy Thanksgiving day in Dallas in 1993, the Cowboys were clinging to a 14-13 lead with under 20 seconds left as Miami lined up for a game-winning field goal try. There's more. 
After the Cowboys blocked the kick, apparently clinching a win, this player inexplicably, inexplicably slid into the football, making it a live ball, which was recovered by the Dolphins. So Miami made a field goal on the next play to win the game in the most improbable way, and who was the cowboy in all of that? I'm lost. I don't even know what you said. I'm lost like, too. Can we go with the three-point <laughs> question? <laughs> okay. So the Cowboys blocked a kick. They looked like they won, but one of their players slid into the ball, so it became live, and then the Dolphins made a field goal, and they won. So you needed to, what Cowboy slid into the ball? Well, and this is 1993. 93. This is, uh, this is a ridiculous hard yeah, question. Yeah, you guys should have gone yeah. for the three-point question. <laughs> yeah, we should get three points for even listening <laughs> to that. <laughs> Can we answer that question? Do you know the answer to that question? I know question? that one, yeah. I will be, like, I was, super amazed. I was, I was there that night. We'll take their question. <laughs> yeah. you, uh, want, you want to do that? Let them have their question. We'll take their what question. Do you, what do you think? Trade? Le- Leon Lett? No. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, oh my gosh. Okay, well, we get their question. I like this. We're just well, three points, that was three here. points, though. We right. agreed that was three points. No, seven, no, seven points. That's it was a seven-point seven question. Oh my Sorry, God. Catch up, buddy. All right. <laughs> now, are you you're gonna you're willing to cede your question over to them now? Or yeah. is that, all yeah. right. All right, guys. Oh so you my. get another chance. I like this. This is good. Okay. Now, think hard. Three points or seven points. Now he's got a 7-0 lead. So. Oh, you gotta go seven. All right. Okay. Which okay, quarter? This one's a shorter question, okay. so we don't have to listen as long. Which quarterback had the famous butt fumble, where he ran into a teammate, fumbled, and then the Patriots returned the ball for a touchdown? Mark Sanchez. Yes. Boom! Woo! Tie it up, baby. Right. That's seven points. Yes. Yes, that was Sorry. seven points. Sorry. Just like last year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was two weeks ago. <laughs> All right. Now it's getting exciting. Okay, so we've got a seven-seven tie heading into the fourth quarter. Um, somehow, I think it's still Team Pollard's. It's our yeah, turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Because they messed it up. Well, go ahead. <laughs> or they stole because they were, yeah, they're, they're, you know, either way. Okay, Patriots. go ahead. We All right, turn. three points yeah. or seven points? What do you think, guys? Seven. We've got to go seven. Seven points. Okay. In 1998, the Steelers' Jerome Bettis was involved in a controversy before overtime began. What happened? What do you think, guys? Oh, oh, it's a coin toss. A coin toss. Do you, can you tell me more? It is. The, the, it is about the coin toss. Yes. Okay, so the coin toss he called here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something. It was. It was uh, a coin toss. You don't, need, you don't need to know what he called. It's the fourth quarter. We need specific. I know. Well, but you, uh, you yeah, don't so need to it, know it, whether it, he called it just heads or tails. Coin toss, right? We yes. Can. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So uh, you know, I'm gonna kind of give that to you. I'm feeling giving. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't like that. Dude. And it's my show. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. All right, here's the story. Here's the story. All right, ready? So Bettis, Bettis called the coin toss in the air, but there was confusion. Right. And the head referee, Phil Luckett, misheard Pittsburgh's call and awarded, awarded Detroit the ball. Right. And then the Lions went on. You're Right, you're agreeing. Like, you knew all this. Why didn't you tell me all this? Well, I was going to say it, but I didn't want to mess anything up. Oh, so. right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay. Then the exactly Lions went on to kick a field goal on the first possession, and they won 1916. Okay. All right? So that's the story. 14-7. Four, 14, seven. Yeah. 14, you, you 14 seven. Seven. Going into the fourth quarter. Good thing we have an OT question, so if you tie it up, it's all okay. good. Okay. So you're going to go with seven, guys? Yep. What do you think? Okay, here you go. Um, CBS, Fox, and NBC will name an MVP after the games on Thursday. Name one of the special trophies given to that game's best player. So, uh, yeah. The, uh, the Turdunkin. Or uh, what's it called? <laughs> Did you say the Turdunkin? <laughs> oh, oh, we're not at a nightclub. That, that is not one of the names on yes. my card. Yes. Do you want to take a second guess? What is, what is it? They already got it wrong. I know, but I'm liking this. I'm giving them a second chance. No, no, no. All right. All right. I'm calling it. I'm sorry. I'm calling it. All right. So CBS awards the All Iron Award. Cobbler. Yes. Fox does the Galloping Gobbler Award. Do you know the last one? Mr. Pollard? It's the turkey, right? It's It's the the John Madden player of the game. Oh, yeah. And NBC. Well, y'all that lost, has so I really very don't care. Less exciting name. <laughs> uh, All right, so. And everyone gets a free Pollard tattoo over there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. I didn't even know that. That's great. Well, congratulations, guys. Team Pollard over there. Thank you, thank you. Very, very good job. I, I like that. Very nicely done. Okay, so that's the end of this segment, and we are going to be back here at Moe's, uh, and we're going to take some audience questions live next. So we'll see you soon.
Hey Titans fans, why just follow the Titans when they can follow you? It's easy with the new Titans Extra app from the Tennessean. You get all the great Titans coverage, plus alerts and breaking news, game casts and schedules, rosters, a live Twitter feed, and more. Everything a Titans fan needs wherever they are. And the best part, it's free for Tennessean subscribers. Download from the iTunes store today. Titans Extra, only from the Tennessean. And this is the part of the show where we go out to the audience here live at Moe's and we have them toss you some questions and we see if they can stump you or if you have any interesting answers. And I have to admit, the first question asker here, I know this one. He, uh, this is my dad. You know, I don't know the question, but I do know this man. This is my dad, Fran, and he came in from Wisconsin to just, just, yes, for, just to ask you, Bernard, one question. Zoom in, on, zoom in on his sweater. Zoom in on it. Yeah, he's wearing his Purdue sweatshirt today. On a hoodie. Where Bernard went, so we're all good. That's Ooh, where my brother goes to college. So, all right, Dad, go ahead. Ask your question. Um, Damien seems to have you retired already and says you're kind of <laughs> old and slow. But John earlier was asking you what you do when you watch the games, and you were giving critiques to the quarterbacks and the secondary and all of this. So, eventually, someday, do you have any interest in coaching at all? Um, I, uh, I wouldn't mind coaching high school or I don't know if I have the patience for like a youth league. I, you know, I've been a slat one of them kids, <laughs> but, um, hi, high school, I, Roger I, I, Goodell's watching, yeah. Bernard, be careful. I don't, I don't even like him. So it's okay. I know. Uh, he's probably, he'd, he'd be the other one to get slapped, but, um, <laughs> high school, I think I, I think I would uh, really enjoy, uh, coaching high school football. Um, you know. With college, and, and I'm, I'm kind of over the NFL. When I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Uh, so, yeah, high school, I probably would. Cool. Thank you, Bernard. Boiler up. All right. Thanks, Dad. All right. Come on up and uh, go ahead and tell me your name and ask your question. My name is Alex Beatty, and uh, we've been ticket holders since day one, uh, 1999. Been through the ups and downs, and I guess what, me just wondering, uh, how, how are you guys combating just – I know we've been with some lows. How, how are you getting the team rallied for the, you know, staying positive, staying, you know, going towards the end of the season? Um, you know, I, I think for me, I'm a true believer. Um, when it comes down to playing football and having a passion for the game, I shouldn't have to get somebody up to want to win. You know, everybody should have that mentality. Everybody should have the same mindset as far as wanting to win. Uh, one thing I can't give you, I can't give you passion, I can't give you love, and I can't give you a desire to play this game. Um, and, and, you know, I'm a true believer, you know, Herm Edwards drafted me. Uh, he was a guy who, you know, instilled a lot in me. And um, I just, I have that mentality now. And, and, and until I'm done playing, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to finish this game off, you know, playing like that. So it, it's tough, uh, you know, at this level uh, to be able to, to try to keep guys at a high uh, because, you know, we get paid a lot of money to play it. I think Dave said it earlier. We played this game for free all the way up, you know, until now. And, and you know, we get we have an opportunity. We're blessed with a talent to play football, to represent ourselves, to represent our city, to represent our organization and family. You know, take advantage of that and go out there and, and, and do it. And and you say the ups and the downs. You know, it's been a, it's been more downs than it's been ups. And you know, we need to reverse that. And, and the only way you reverse that is by changing the identity and getting new people in here to do it. I look forward to seeing you guys keep doing it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we got to get it question. done first. <laughs> Damien, do you have anything to add on that on how you guys are keeping up in the locker room right now? Uh, he pretty much said it. You know, <laughs> uh, can't really – I could just wing it off of that. But uh, like he said, we just got to get more, more ups than downs, change this whole thing around. Yeah, cool. All right, so we've got another audience question here. And go ahead. Uh, my name is Dane, uh, and it's for both of you. And you can't say the Titans. What's the who's the best team in the NFL that you think right now? And you you can say Cowboys too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the best team in the National Football League right now, to me, um, the best all-around team. You, you you have to look at you have to look at New England. Uh, they're hitting all cylinders. Defense playing well. Offense playing well. Special teams producing. Uh, and the coaching staff, you know, they're, you know, Belichick is he's he's built something there, uh, and you see it year in and year out. You know, whether they can um, finish it in the playoffs, whether they finish it at the end of the season, you know, that's on them. But I think you know, right now in the National Football League, they are probably one of the best teams 
um, that, that you see right now. Does it, uh, does it hurt you to talk well about New England? You, you've got a little bit of rep a reputation, certainly, with New England over the years. Is it tough to uh, pump New England up after your history with those guys? No, because I got more wins. I got losses against them. <laughs> so, you know, I can, I, you know, but for me, you know, I, I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, you know, Brady's playing well. Uh, the offensive line's playing well. And everybody, you know, everybody thought they were going to have a down year or there's going to be some questions on the offensive line with the trading of Mankins. Uh, but, I, you know, the guy that stepped in and, and just everybody, they're playing really well. Um, and, you know, their record shows it. I would have to agree and go with the Patriots. They got new guys coming in and they're just all playing real good. Very cool. Thanks, guys. All right, we've got another question here. Go ahead and take it away. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, the Patriots. No, no, it can't be the Patriots. You can't. Just can't. <laughs> This is for Damon. Uh, if, if memory serves, you had interceptions in four consecutive games at Nebraska your senior year. Now that you got your first one last week, can we expect the next three games you're going to have one in each of those? Right, that's, no, yeah. pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. I like that. That's, that's usually how they come. You know, I get one and then the ball seems to find me all the time after that. So that's usually what it takes is just one. Okay, so if he not catching them, they going over his head. What you gonna say about that one? <laughs> <laughs> but I doubt he's always in good position. So yeah, I have the best ball skills on the team, probably. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How many picks you got? One. Okay. All right. So I know you said earlier that you were keeping your preseason picks. So what did you do with this ball? Where did you put it? Oh, I'm definitely giving this to my grandma. Her birthday just passed a couple of weeks ago. So I'm gonna give it to her. She's getting pretty old, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather give it to her while she's alive. Yeah, uh, de define pretty old, by the way. She's up there. She's up there. She ain't got no sense. <laughs> Bogle, just switch it out to her preseason ball. She ain't gonna know the difference. <laughs> she's not watching tonight, I don't think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah this is not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> So it is Thanksgiving week, and I did want to ask each of you guys, um, you know, what, what are you most thankful for right now? Go ahead. Um, I'm just thankful to be in the position that I am. You know, I get to help out my family. I get to go in the community and help out the community, the younger kids, give them a good message back home, even in Nashville. And, you know, I'm just thankful for everything that I've been blessed with so far. This. Uh, I think for me, uh, it's just truly been a blessing. Uh, to see where I started, you know, as far as my younger years and, and to see where I am now, is, like I said, it's just truly a blessing. I thank God every day. Um, like Dame said, we get an opportunity to provide for our families. We get an opportunity, you know, for me to be able to come in here and see so many people smiling, um, you know, to, to meet so many different people. Uh, this is truly, you know, this is truly, it, it, this warms my heart. And so uh, I, I love to take advantage of it. Um, I love to be able to, to make people laugh. I love to laugh, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, just, just for me, this is just truly, truly a blessing. These nine years and, and however many more uh, there is, um, this is just truly my, my, my great years and I have many more to go. And so uh, that's exciting. That's great. Well, we love to laugh with you, too. John, David, do you guys have any closing thoughts? No, no, this is my show. We just... That's it? You just want your show? It's Bernard's show. All right, all right. Well, then we're done. No, we got we to gotta hear it. We got to hear it. I, I, one quick question for you guys, if we can get it in in time. The, uh, we talked about a little bit earlier, the Odell Beckham catch on, on Sunday night. Everybody's talking about the league. Best catch ever? What do you guys think? I got to say, because he scored with it. So that's yeah. by far the best catch to me. Um, you know, and that top that tops uh, Buddy's catch with New England, or was it uh, Gronkowski? No, 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 no. Um, oh, Hillman. Tyree. Tyree, yeah. Mm, so yeah. that that tops that's that true. catch. So yeah, it's definitely the best catch. Oh no, that's in the Super Bowl though. It doesn't matter. They won. They won the Super Bowl because of that. They won a Super Bowl because well, of that, so you're wrong. But I won a Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I, I won a Super Bowl, so I can say that. That was the best catch. <laughs> Would you not put it over that way? I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Bernard, is it fair, though? These And you guys defend them. These guys with the gloves now, the receivers. Right. Could – how much easier is it for a guy to oh, make that catch? And I know it's not yeah. an easy catch anyway, but right. that does help, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, the, the gloves these days, man, uh, regardless what it is – it's almost like you got to stick them on them, you know. But, you know, for the receivers and for the, the, the defenders, you know, we both work with the same thing, the same product. 
so you know it, it, it that definitely helps, but at the same time you got to give credit where it's, where it's yeah, due. Absolutely. I think three fingers, three fingers grabbed that. So uh, that was that was really fun to see. Uh, I just hope that he can he can do the same thing next week. Not make the same catch, but produce like he did last week. That's gonna be great. All right, guys. Well, as we all think about doing, enjoying our turkey this week, thank you, Bernard, for being here, as always, and sharing your laughs. And thank you, thank Damien, you. for being here and, and bringing a couple smiles and ribbing, mm -hmm. ribbing Bernard a little bit. <laughs> and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody from the Tennessean. And we'll be back next week for the next Bernard Pollard Show. Yeah.